All right. Now that we created our database for our table for our homes and the database, we also uploaded two properties just to get us started in the database. What we're going to do is go back to our design pet tab and, and display these properties using what we want to call a repeatable group. So a repeatable group is just like a group. However, it, it duplicates or multiplies the layout that you define. So, um, it's great for, for creating slideshows, which we're going to be using here. So you, you're going to see, let's go ahead and make this repeatable group. So make that there. So instead of vertical, a vertical group, what we want to do is create we could create a horizontally scrolling group. We don't want to make a scroller all right now. I'm going to create just a fixed number of cells. Let's just say one row for now. And four columns. And set it to be a fixed width. So we want to set it the type of content that we want to be a home. So these are the, this is the type represents the type of data that's going to be stored. So like I said, repeatable groups is easy to connect to the database and pull from the database. So what we want to do is bring in type home and the data source is We won't need to set that right now. So, well, maybe we do have to. So, one issue here your app needs its own G Google Geoco API key to process addresses. All right. So, we'll deal with that one later. That error later. I just noticed one error. If you have an error, you're going to see at the top. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and design how this, these are is going to be laid out. So again, shape, we want to add a background image. So, so this is the, the dimensions that I want to use. So as you notice, when I add this block, you notice it's repeating in these other four cells. That's because it's going to read from the database and, and, and put the data in the same format. So let's go ahead and design that. Stretch that a little bit more. Yep. And instead of repeating group home, we're going to show this as call this home listing column. I'm going to call that slide this image over. Give this a name, call that column. Just listing column thumbnail. It's just a thumbnail limit. So, and what we want to do is so the background style. Instead of a flat color, we want it to be an image. And instead of a static image, like we had a static static image up top for our hero image, we want to use dynamic image. And inserting dynamic data means is data coming from either the database or some other source. So let's choose current sales home. 
So like I said, this, this repeatable group has a content type of home. And so it's pulling, what this really is saying is pull all the homes from the database and we want to do is select per home. So let's focus on this one cell here. So in this first sales home, we want to grab that sales photos and what we want to do is let's go ahead and just grab the first photo that we'd upload for any given property, any given home. And let's go ahead and center this image. And we can make this image as wide as parent element. And these are just a bunch of other settings. So let's go ahead and preview. Let's see if this actually changes. All right, so you can see the grid there, but image isn't appearing just yet. Why wow, that is. Type of content. Let's do a search for home. So maybe that's it. So data source. So the type of data for this reputable group is home, but we also need to set the data for source, which is, you know, where are we pulling this from? So we need to do search for homes. That just mean grab all homes. Now we can add new constraints. We can, for instance, uh, say if we want only homes with a certain price, we could set that setting only homes of a certain square feet or whatever, only homes of a certain address, but we won't focus on that. But nonetheless, we won't be adding a constraint. We want, what we do want to do is sort by um, creation date. So, and we only want the most recent homes. So the creation date should be descending to yes. And that should be the only thing we need for now. So let's go ahead and preview. That fixed it. There we go. So as you can see, our homes appeared. So let's go ahead and add some more styles. We want to get rid of this border here. I don't like these gray lines. So let's go back and click on the columns. So let's go and edit the style. So we over to the style tab and separato. We don't want that line set. So let's go ahead and click none. Hit the preview. And there we go. These getting rid of. So the lines disappeared. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and add something else. So we want to add some more elements. We want to add, we want to display the price. So instead of just edit me, we can add insert dynamic data. So get current sales home and we want to get the price. Now, we can also format the price. So right now it's a raw number. So if we click preview, it's just raw numbers. We want to format this, format this as currency. So let's go ahead and we can go ahead and format that as currency. So instead of a number, let's turn it to currency. Don't want any decimal places. Thousand separator, make that a comma. So US dollars, set that as currency. Cool. And let's remove the style of this. Make this bold. Turn this into, make this just a tad bit bigger, 18.5.
snap it on the side here. Killer image. So make images wide as parent element. Let's go ahead and preview, see what we got. So you see the prices here. And so we it's just as easy to go ahead and and add all the other items. So so we want to just make this little car here. So what I want to do is let's go ahead and group these. So let's click on the image, hold a shift key, and click on this price cell here and want to do is right click. We want to group these items. So we're going to call this. This thing column card. So like I said, groups are great for editing your elements together at once. So, and keeping them coupled together. So they're not only good for creating a layout when you want to drag things around, but it also, if you want to apply certain styles or certain properties to the group, you can do it as a whole. So in this case, for our group, we want to add some styles to it. So we want to just remove the style. What we want to do, we want to add a background image. Let's set it to being white. Just add a little bit of border to it. Five pixels. Let's add a little shadow, offset shadow. Set the horizontal offset to zero, vertical offset one. This is just a little bit of styling. And let's make it a little bit darker. Feel a little bit lighter. Transparency. A bit. And Let's go ahead and hit that preview button. Okay. <laughs> That's what we get. So I want to smooth out, make the edges at the top right and the top left round to two, just like they're at the bottom. So what that is, it's, it's the image itself. The top right and top left of the image needs to be rounded. So let's go ahead and click on the thumbnail image. And what we want to do is add define each border independently. There we go. So we want to do top left, set that to five pixels, top right, five pixels, five pixel radius, and preview. And this should round it out. Cool. So I started up pretty nicely. So nonetheless, let's go ahead and add the other bills. So like I said, we can just go ahead and grab the group. Stretch that a little bit more. Stretch that to the bottom. Add some text. So we want to display. So we want to display the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms and the square feet. So dynamic data, parent groups, home. So number of bedrooms. And you can just click in this space here, hit the space button and click bed. And all we need. So copy, paste. Copy, paste. That's going to be for square feet. Set of bedrooms, we want to change that. The number of bathrooms. Yep. Change this to number of square feet. So probably set a number of bathrooms feet. 
it a bit. Change that to square feet. Cool. Go ahead and align that. And below, we want to display the address. So click preview. Let's just see what we have. So we need to stretch out the square feet a little bit longer. Preview. Cool. And so we're getting clipped at the bottom a little bit. So we want to add the address below. Let's go ahead and drag this a little bit further and drag that down a little bit there. Our card has some text, click text. Let's stretch our address. So we have one issue here is I click when I did, when we designed the database, uh, we chose to set our address type as, as a general address, but that requires us to use the Google, a Google API, which I don't have the API key right now. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to store we're going to break up the address instead of one whole address. So let's go back to the data and we want to go back to homes and for address. Let's go back to data types and for home. So we want to, so for address, we're going to change that, change that field. So. Let's get an address field. Create a new field. Yes, we want to call this address as well. So instead, we're going to change that to just text. And we want to add a new field called city. So the reason why I'm breaking this up is to make this actually searchable. So let's create text there. So what I mean by, by that is if I was to just had an address field and create searchable. I won't be able to connect the actual search box to and dedicate that strictly to an actual field. So since I made the city field, um, I can actually strictly connect the search box to it. And you're going to see that display later. So let's add the state. Let's create that. Let's add zip code. Zip code is a number. So address city, date, and zip code. That's all I think I need. Let's go over to app data. And let's go ahead and refresh. Click call homes. You can see here, these were added. So, so let's go ahead and edit this first home. So address is this 24, uh, Oak Tree Street at that Nashville. City is Nashville. State Tennessee. And zip code three seven one two zero. Let's go ahead and save. 
add it. Let's edit this other address. Belmont Mansion. 1900. Asheville. C37120. Then a save. Got it. Cool. So now that we have that save, but we can actually go down here, click on this text, instead of text F, I have listing R dash address. So we're gonna have one whole box. We can actually append the text. So we wanna so yeah, do that there. Click insert data. The parent group's home. So we want to grab the home. So we want the address. Which you, what you can do, which is cool, is you can add extra text. So add address space. The city. Cool. There we go. Add a comma, space, parent groups home, state, space, and we want to add the zip code. So this is just a format of a US address. Zip code. Ooh. And that's all that's needed. So let's go ahead and preview. Oh, just stretch that down a little bit. So that's what that looks like. Cool, that looks good. So let's actually make this a little bit wider. Hmm. Let's click on a group instead of four columns three columns let's stretch the card a little bit further bring it down a bad bit image a little bit bigger And I want to drag these elements, drag them down a bit. Let's give them labels as well. So listing card, change that to price. Listing card. Change that to some bedrooms, number of bedrooms, in card of that room. Change that to number of square feet. Cool, 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 cool. Stretch this out. Cool. The preview. Cool. That's what I wanted. That's what the listing cards look like. You see, as we stretch it out, it add a little bit more more space to it. So, and as we continue to add more properties, you know, this, this list is just going to keep growing. So we can set limits and we can do all that fancy stuff, but this all I want to show you what repeatable groups are it took a while, but, but nonetheless, we were able to create 
show you how to use cars, show you how to create the database. And and how to read from the database and also how to edit data in the database. And as you saw, we had to delete the address field, the old address field and create our new address field. And, uh, was able to do that pretty easily. But nonetheless, this is what we have. So, so this is looking pretty good for now. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to create a new page and show you how to do some navigation and how to navigate to that page by clicking on one of these properties here. So stick around.